so Henry, it's good to see you again. Good to see you. Here uh, we are, uh, part three. So, so there you go. starting to really, you know, feel these podcasts, starting to have a good time. So uh, ready for your your questions today. Excellent. Just excited to discuss more. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about your partners um, today, cool. kind of how everything works working with them. Um, uh, first of all, what are some of the most common um, challenges, the payment processing challenges faced by the partners you work with in the CBD and hemp industries? Yeah, so with my partners specifically, it's not all of them, to be completely honest. It's only simply the CBD and hemp partners that are also like us, but instead they're actually ancillary services or solutions for CBD and hemp. So for some like minor examples, you know, any ERP solutions, um, CRMs, uh, data management, or the really big one, which I've gotten a ton of, you know, introductions and referrals, which is uh, web agencies. I actually work with a really awesome web, web agency up in um, West Palm Beach. Not sure if I can really say their name, but their hyper niches around cannabis, uh, CBD and hemp. And not a lot of people know this, but you don't have to specifically sell the product to be considered under this high risk category. Oh, really? It's really anybody that kind of has to do with the business or kind of touches the business, even though they're not selling the plant directly or kind of selling it to consumers. They're still under the high risk category. So the way that I've helped out, you know, this specific company and some of the other ancillary ones that I work with in the industry is the same way I would help, you know, normal and CBD and hemp companies is just making sure they have the lowest rates, they have no reserves, they have good customer service, they have someone that always picks up the phone when they call. But it's a little bit different than the people that sell direct to consumers because we have, you know, compliance. Yes. There's a lot more, a lot more risk moder- monitoring we have to do. But when it comes to reputational risk, that's the biggest challenge um, that they face. And there, there was an interesting thing that happened about a year ago uh, to me where I saw that CBD and hemp companies were not only dealing with issues in payment processing, but they were also dealing with issues in uh, marketing because they're shadow banned, distribution, manufacturing, and even COAs, which is uh, kind of crazy. So I saw a really interesting opportunity to not only service this uh, web agency that was still considered high risk, but also you know make introductions for that web agency with CBD and hemp companies that were struggling with their marketing, and that helped in two ways, which was you know helping another business with bringing additional clientele with new business development, and then actually bringing additional sales uh, to the the business to consumer and business to business CBD and hemp companies. Since you brought it up, um, can you explain some of the key compliance and regulatory hurdles that some of your partners um, often encounter? Yeah, yeah. It's mostly just state to state. Um, Since it is federally legal at this point in time, that's obviously why the credit card uh, companies and the card brands are more than open to taking and giving them the ability to take the plastic. But it mostly at this point in time comes to state to state where, where you're shipping out products, how you're testing out products, what your COA needs to look like, you know, pre harvest um, versus uh, post harvest, uh, the ways they're using your data, data management, what you need to report um, specifically to the state. You know, some states you need a, a hemp license, some you don't. Some retail locations in some states to sell these products, you need a retail sales li- license, and then some you don't. So it's, it's very state to state, so it can kind of be mazy. To some extent, but luckily, you know, here at TouchWe, you know, we have the, the lobbyists, we have the legal team, uh, the underwriters and, 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 <laughs> and the risk team. It's so funny. You walk by their desk now and you'll see so many different, you know, CBD companies there because the, <laughs> the, the, the CBD guys love them. You know, the of way course. that they underwrite, you know, they're also open to talking to them. So um, when it comes to compliance and risk, and honestly, it's so hard to keep up with it. It changes week to week. But luckily, we have the individuals and the players that be that see these things change in a daily fashion and then they can update me and then we can kind of exchange information. So we're always um, working in compliance and and risk requirements when it comes to our CBD hemp and all the other high risk rails we're a part of. Gotcha. Um, How do you handle the risk associated with the high chargeback rates in the industry? Specifically with CBD and hemp? Well, I do it in in, in multiple ways. Before, I like to do kind of like an analysis uh, prior before even making any uh, recommendations for chargeback companies or uh, fraud protection companies and the analysis I like to make is, and, and I don't have to do this as a, as a salesman or as a consultant, I like to do it as an educator to kind of go and see where the problem stems from first and then see how I can guide them in getting it solved. And that has to do with looking at their fulfillment agreements, looking at their uh, return policies, their shipping policies, their refund policies. And if these merchants don't have it clear cut and transparent for their consumers then you can kind of tell why they're facing the certain types of chargebacks because the because the companies that have them clear cut and transparent which i work with i work with companies on both sides they don't face those issues i've kind of 
looked at the companies that are the best when it comes to being customer centric and I've taken what I've learned from them and giving that knowledge to other um, industry uh, merchants and players to kind of, you know, fix those, you know, back end solutions. And then if I see there's no way of fixing that, then I introduce them and I recommend them to a chargeback or fraud protection company that I have a relationship with, which I have multiple, but it just depends on their needs, which one is the, the perfect fit for them. Yeah, the more information you have, the better it is for you to kind of find the solution. Yeah, some people in the industry like to just make the intro without really kind of, you know, digging deep into the, the seed of the problem. Sure. I like to start there, even though it is the, the harder work. I found out that if you do the harder work at the beginning, most likely means you don't have to do it in the long term. Gotcha. That's what these people are looking for. Absolutely. Um, not naming names or anything, but can you discuss any specific partnerships or collaborations you've engaged in to improve payment processing within these sectors? Yeah. Yeah. So the first one I joined was actually in Florida a little bit earlier this year. It's called C Lab. It actually starts for cannabis labs. It's been around uh, for 10 years. It's more around compliance and um on the, on the legal side, so it actually got started by lawyers, um, four other lawyers to kind of learn about the industry and to get into it. But over the last um, five years, it's actually uh, grown to more of like an event and networking and okay. social community. Mm -hmm. um, so we meet every last uh, Thursday of the month at uh, AMSO, American Social down in Fort Lauderdale. And, uh, you know, we just, you know, meet each other, kind of network, see if there's any ways to work together. And it's also another really great way to kind of, you know, meet friends and find if there's any other... Um, opportunities in the industry. The way I've helped with merchant processing specifically around that is there's been a big uh, increase in, in growth when it comes to uh, hemp seeds and cannabis seeds and I've seen a really big growth in the South Florida market. I've been able to help educate and aid individuals with the right, uh, not only payment processing sponsor banks, but also the banks when it comes to the direct deposit um, pillar of your business with setting them up with that, you know, as well. And um, what strategies can you use? You know, a lot of these people, you start, you bring them in, you start with where they are, but um, as they grow, they need to scale their business. So what strategies do you use to keep them from kind of encountering payment processing problems as they do grow as a company? It all has to do specifically in CBD and hemp. All it is is increasing revenue because you're in such a saturated market that you have to stay extremely competitive. And the way in which you do that and the way in which I've recommended, of course, not everyone listens to me as, as much as I wish they would, but um, the ones that that do, you know, I you know give them different ideas around different SKUs that they can sell in their e-commerce. And the way that I do that is we work with a lot of manufacturers and distributors, and they always have different uh, products and commodities coming out. So whichever ones that I see are hot in the market, mm -hmm. I always want to make that introduction to B2C merchants, which... At the end of the day, it gives my B2B partner a, a sale and then sure. it gives my B2C partner a, uh, a market um, advantage, which actually brings more clicks to conversions on their website. Another one that I've done is make the connections to that web agency that works in a lot of different uh, manners to make introductions um, to different types of you know social media pages or social communities like Reddit, for example, sure. where they kind of try to go through Instagram and Facebook um, which they can't, you know, do on, and you'll get shadow banned. But they find these different ways to kind of, you know, get you on the radio, get you on local podcasts, and just you know increase revenue overall. And those are just a few minor ones. I could probably sit here and talk your ear off for about forty-five <laughs> minutes if you really wanted me to. If you want me to, go check out my LinkedIn, book a meeting with me. I'm more than happy to. Um, I think kind of this goes to the heart of the whole issue when you're dealing with not just CBD and hemp, but all the high-risk yep. um, industries. How do you deal with the potential negative stigma that's associated with CBD and hemp when you're working with the financial institutions and payment processors? It's all about the way in which you paint the picture, not only to the bank and the underwriters, but also how you paint it to the merchant. You really want to be transparent with the merchants, run them through what the process looks like with the bank, because at the end of the day, we have one job here at TouchSuite, and it's to make sure that our merchant, our prospect, is happy with the way in which you're sweat, we're setting them up from the pricing schedule, um, the way in which you know we're going to put them through underwriting and kind of get them approved. And then the second people that you have to make happy in our business, and this is for you know stress-free long-term uh, relationships and processes, is you need to make sure that they're comfortable with handling the associated risk on the account. And as long as you can make those two players comfortable, which I believe that is one of our main jobs, they have an awesome relationship, which if your merchant gets along with underwriting and underwriting gets along with your merchant, that's the easiest way to not only build a long-term and stress-free you know, relationship, but to actually build um, 
kind of a, a friend's relationship with your merchant where they actually believe in the company which is doing the merchant processing, which if you ask anybody, they'll probably tell you that they don't believe in them. So it's a massive advantage to kind of curate that. But at the end of the day, that's something that we have to do and you do it with the knowledge that you pick up and how long you're in the industry for. Absolutely.